Yeah, you don't sense uh, your your spidey senses don't go up. The head, basically, the hair doesn't uh, it doesn't stand up on the back yeah. of your neck. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but uh, uh, this is a, a weird a weird skeleton. It looks it looks like this this creature's got like a beak on the front, and then you recognize it. You're like, oh, this is a this is a kanku skeleton. Yeah, a kanku. Yeah, it's one of those uh, like crow type of humanoids. Yeah, and the weird thing about this the skeleton is that skeleton is basically pointing towards the wall or pointing towards that pointing towards that base relief on the wall. What's a kanku? A kanku is like a crow bird type of humanoid. Sort of like an air crocker, but shorter. Uh, so, in fact, I can, I f I'll find an image for you one second. I think I got one. Hey, uh, human, half elf, whatever you want to be, come over here and look at this fresco. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's, that's what cool the kanku looks like. Yeah, that's what the kanku looks like. Yeah. Like a yeah, crow I'm type of humanoid. Kanku I'm talking reels. to you. What's your name again? Barian. Barian, yeah. <laughs> uh, this this uh, Kenku skeleton's pointing at this fresco. Yep, and it's the it's the the fresco of the dretch, and I'll also give you a an image of a dretch as well. I think I have one. I do, and this is the this is the what the base relief looks like. It's it's it's, oh. it's a pig with. <laughs> it's man bear pig. It's man bear pig. Yeah. It really is. Oh, I'm sure that's on the DMs guild. Oh that's, that's, <laughs> that could leave a mark. Okay, well since he's pointing at this fresco, I'm gonna check this fresco in about the same way that I did the other. Sure. Sure thing. And you can just you can just put that into the, the tower for me. <clears throat> so yeah, you can see that there is a a secret door there. Oh. Yeah, and and you notice that there's like these eye holes where the eyes are on the dretch. There's like two eye holes that you can that, that looks like someone can look out at you. Oh, okay. But yeah, there's Good. definitely a secret door and, and and it looks like you can you can open it up if you want to. How, how tall are the eye holes? Can I reach them? Uh, sure. Yeah, you can, unless you're like a gnome or something like that. <laughs> no, I'm human sized. I look, um... Unless you're concentrated. <laughs> no, no gnomes this time, hopefully. Um, so I don't want to stick my face up to black holes in this rock. So yeah, you I don't want to take a spear to the eye or anything, right? Right. Would, was... you, would you like me to check it? Oh, hold on there. I've I've got the safe check here. I'm gonna stick a mirror up to it and see if I can look into the holes. With... Sure. Yeah, the the eye holes are actually blocked as you look in. The, the The eye holes are definitely blocked. So it looks like there's some kind of like maybe a little sliding piece of wood or or stone or something behind. Hey, what's up? Welcome, Marian, Travis. This looks like some type of uh, mechanism, a secret door. Maybe you can work some magic on it. I'll check it out. Sure, give me an investigation check in the tower for me, Marion. And in fact, I'll just say, no, you don't find any traps because you're skilled in traps. Oh, and that roll is, is pretty awesome anyway. So yeah, there's no traps and you, uh, you basically say, here, here, we'll open it up and you use the little dial to turn it and voila, the door slides and there is a, uh, an empty 10 foot door that you can see and, uh, and also a chamber well like a tunnel that uh, a roughly hewn like stone tunnel that leads away from this uh from this small little chamber definitely would interesting like, would you all like me to check this out 
Well, there's what, definitely a door back here. That's that's very cool. But what do we see to our e or west? To your west, that's that's also a good question, and I should have probably uncovered it for you. But you see that there are some stairs that descend down about uh, 10 feet. And it looks like there are, it's like a pillared forested room that's in front of you as, as you look down cool. into the room. So there's a bunch of pillars in this room. Okay, I remember what that inscription said. Beyond the pillar forest, the mad mage of war. Uh huh. Casting there you spells go. behind magic gates. So, first thing we can assume are there are magic gates in this place, and the there inscription are. tells us to go this direction. However, maybe who wrote that inscription didn't know about this. Maybe they don't. But you definitely have a, a secret room with a tunnel leading away. And you also... So now we have a fork in the road. Yeah, you have a... You definitely have a fork in the road. How far oh up to the... Are you going up to the steps to kind of take a... Like a cursory glance into the room? Sure, I'll step up to the, to the top of the step. Okay, sure. So what you're going to see is... Uh, Trinkets, you're going to see a... This is basically a four-way... And you're going to see that there's uh, an area to the north, an area to the south, and straight across from you to the west. And it looks like as this, like this forested pillar room is basically down 10 feet, it looks like stairs go back up 10 feet once you leave this pillared forest room. Well, well my... In my, oh, go ahead. in my experience, secrets are always worth investigating. Yeah, I was about so. to say the same thing. This oh. this looks a lot more intriguing. Sure. I guess, Barry, you want to scout it out for us? Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Sure, so, why not? I like it. So. So I, I will go through the door, and then I want to do a stealth and hopefully just disappear. Sure. Give me a stealth check in the tower. And as you start to, you know, wind your way through this five-foot-wide rough-hewn stone tunnel, you can you can hear the, you know, it's descending down as well. So as it starts to descend down, it, it gets a little slippery, because there is like a like a water that's not it's not raining and it's like water just dripping down, and as you make your way down here to the bottom, it opens up into a uh, it opens up into a larger room. Okay. Do you need um, a, do you need an acrobatic check to make sure I'm not sliding down the hall? No, no, there's no type of yeah. You're you're not doing anything like that. So you work your way all the way down here, Barian, through this five foot wide chamber, and you can see that this room opens up, and you can you can see pretty much the almost the entire room, and a couple of things about this room. First off, where you're at, the room goes from east to west, right? And where you're at on the east, you can see that the room does slope down going towards the west. So it looks like there's a, so differentiating the, the floor, if you're right here, it's at ground level up to about right where you're at. But then by the ground time you would get here, yeah, correct. Or, it's it's level with the with the the corridor that you just came out of that that tunnel. Now, understand. now it descends down about six feet or so. So the slope from here to here is about six feet. And you also see that there is a uh, to the south, like west, there is a tunnel. And then as you come out into the room. On ground level, you can see that there is a a, a huge uh, a statue, and there's a you know in this northern alcove, it's a it's like a life-size statue of a Sahawagan, and 
and the water is actually pretty deep to this point. So we're taking probably the waters up about three feet because the statue, the water submerges the statue up to its chest. And it's a sewer water, so it's it's uh, it doesn't smell very good. And you could actually smell it before you got into the larger chamber. And around the statue, it's uh, emitting like a very dim purple type of radiance. Actually, a very beautiful purple radiance. And what's weird is the Sagawagan's head is completely turned around now that you do like a double take on it. And one of the arms has been broken off too. And you, so you're thinking maybe because you can't, the arm isn't anywhere to be seen. So you're thinking, uh, maybe it's in the water. You know what I mean? And like I said, the water's up to about the chest on the saw, on the saw wagon. Okay. So if you guys don't know what a saw wagon looks like, they, I remember they, I remember years ago, you said you, you liked the way I said saw wagon. Because you pronounce it correctly. One of the few words in the English language that I pronounce right is Sahuagan. I know that's what makes it so <laughs> I know. I'm not sure that's an English word, but okay. Uh, there is there is what a Sahuagan looks like. So that is what that's what the statue looks like. So what say you? I can't call you Shen anymore. I keep wanting to call you Shen. So what say you, Barian? What say uh, you? I will go back and let the rest of the party know what I found down here. Okay. Um, it is a a room, um, r a rather large room, actually, a statue of a Sahawagan in it that uh, appears hey, to be missing an arm. A couple and hours maybe now. Maybe its head's moving. And there's some water. <laughs> maybe it's, really, it's, maybe it's, it's really stinking. It's, it's, it's sewage water down there. So um, maybe we should send the half orcs in first. Well, <laughs> I us, love it. Did you tell us about the uh, glow? I would imagine he probably did. Yeah, yeah. I tell you everything that I, I can't well, figure out how to get the half orcs to go in first because it's stinky water. Well, 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 where's the glow coming from? From the it's, statue. Yeah, the purple glow is emanating from the Sahuagan so statue. So the statue is glowing. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah, it's missing an arm, and it its is. head may or may not move, and it's glowing. Mm. But it's in really stinky water. It, it doesn't so sound... It's in the half orcs. Well, it doesn't sound like they, they would keep treasure in this room. No, 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 no. I don't if know if, if I it's glowing, it's magical. And where there's magic, there's treasure. Yeah. And, and so don't I forget... Yeah, say, maybe. Well, yeah, hmm. That's how it works. Okay. Well, that's why we bring you. <laughs> uh, I'm not afraid of a little sewer water. Let's Mama go. used to make us take baths in it anyway to save yeah, money. I remember. Okay, so are we following back? So are we going down? Or are we... I guess we are. Feel free yeah. to proceed me. Let's, let's go hug the side go wagon. <laughs> Well, Eric, man, <laughs> Jethro, hug it. I no, wait, no, hold on. Before it. you touch the thing, let me take a look at the Yeah, don't hey, forget, go. cast, you know, don't forget, detect magic, dispel magic, all that stuff will, you know, could possibly help out. But as you, as you get close to, you know, as you start to look at it, uh, trinkets, you don't, you know, and, and you see the the half orcs. They just rush up to it. Nothing happens to them. They don't catch on fire or anything like that. So yeah, you you, you just don't you, you don't notice anything about it. That not that you can see offhand, anyways. I'm not I'm not in the in the water here, am I? No, no. But uh, but the two I'm half orcs are. Yeah. Well, you you know, with a purify food and water spell, that that water could uh, be good drinking water. Don't forget that either. That's another spell. So you know that you have a water source in case you ever run out of water down here. Yeah, that's a good point. Just put a pin in that. I have put a pin in of that. Water so far. I, I, it's a yeah. that's a big pin. 
<laughs> that's a big pin. But there oh, may be so other water sources in here, too. By. Yes, there is a baby Ruth that's just kind of floating by, <laughs> bouncing up and down in the water. <laughs> So Jethro, what are you doing? You're you're pretty close to that statue. You notice one arm is is knocked off, and you're like, oh wait, because you just kick something, and you reach down into the water and you pull up this Sahawagan arm. So you're like, ah, oh, there's the arm, and you can see that the the head is actually turned around opposite. You're like, whoa, that's it's not one chunk of of stone. It's like this this head rotates. Kind of cool. I told Marion to check it out and see if it's uh, booby trapped or or some type of mechanism. Maybe it's my to reveal or something. And with that, I'm going to you're going to what? Give him guidance. Okay. So, half orcs. Well, I'm probably getting ready to turn the head around. CS6, take it easy, bud. Oh, I'm getting ready to. I have it. Back on it. If I turn this head around, maybe it'll open a door or something. Oh, maybe. So, yeah, and this is a pretty pretty large statue as well. And like I said, it's, it's size, but it's got a big base. So, you know, if you want to step on the on the statue, feel free to. Well, on the on the rate because you can tell it's all like on a raised dais, hence yeah, the heard. the big circle. Okay, sure. So so as you guys get on, you know Walter and Jethro, you guys are I'll put you guys on the on the squares. You guys are starting to you know turn this head around, and it definitely moves, and you don't notice anything with the you know them going into the purple aura, but all of a sudden a something gray just kind of falls down like a like a blanket from the ceiling uh, and nobody noticed this thing at all so it's going to get a, a surprise attack and it's going to uh, go ahead and attack uh, first off it's going to it's going to do a couple of things so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to give a saving throw to Walter Bone Splatter you're, uh, you felt something kind of invading your mind. You, fe you felt something like you felt a uh. bunch of pressure in your head, but you resisted it and shook it off with a, a great intelligence a saving throw. And then that's when you look up and you see this thing drop down. And it drops down right on top of Jethro. And it looks like a, uh, you would know what this is. You're, you're, you're a half orc, you're an adventurer. It looks like a, a gray ooze. And I will go ahead and. Uh, do the gray ooze and, and, and like I said, it falls right on Jethro. So I am going to go ahead and give it an attack with advantage because it has the element of surprise. And I'm going to give that attack advantage on Jethro. So you are hit with a 20 Jethro. And this thing is going to do some bludgeoning damage, and also your skin starts to burn from acid damage as you're moderately wounded from 14 bludgeoning and acidic damage. And now you are, uh, you can see that your armor, uh, let's see, uh, you're not wearing metal armor, so, but you're feeling the, uh, oh, or, or actually, are you wearing a metallic armor? You are. So you can actually see that your, your armor that you're wearing, the half plate that you're wearing, is being corroded from this uh, this gray ooze that's now on top of you. So it, it, your armor is corroding. So that's it. We've go ahead and we've gone ahead and done this uh, surprise round for the gray ooze. You guys can go ahead and give me an initiative check. As as Jethro is just blanketed Jesse! with this. Great ooze. We're so stupid, Jeff. Get it off me. I guess I lost bet. If I if I bet on myself, we we lost. <laughs> what did we learn? Oh, wow, nice rolls, guys. Yeah, the the ooze has a had a bad initiative. So Jethro, you get to go first with your twenty two initiative. <laughs> what did we learn? <laughs> what did we learn? <laughs> All right, Jethro, what say you? All right, is this thing in 
beyond me or is it in the square next to me? No, it's definitely on you because of I can't stack tokens. That's why I put it beside you. But for your action, you can take that thing and throw it off of you. Yeah, I'd like to get this thing off of me. What square would you like to put it in? Even you could put it in Walter's square if you want and throw it on him. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> take this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw you can it move the, the token where uh, you square want to, put to the it. left of us okay sounds good all right so yeah you get that thing thrown off that's your your action uh, you can do any kind of uh, any kind of uh, bonus action if you like or take a take an attack of opportunity to run away but you, you notice that your your uh, your armor is definitely corroded it looks like it's taken one for the team He's gonna have a half um, testy belt. <laughs> yeah, I will right. uh, bonus action second wind. Okay, I'm gonna put a minus one AC on you because of the the damaged uh, armor that you have now. Sucks, doesn't it? Welcome to Undermountain, guys. Rust monsters and great oozes. Oh my! <laughs> so uh, second wind, uh, you go ahead and use it. You get back thirteen. Wow, very nice. Uh, you're barely wounded. Anything else for you? All right. Let's go to uh, Trinkets. You are now up. Ooh. Okay. So now we get to see if all these uh, effect things work. Yeah, house effect, house rules, and I'm I'm excited. Well, I didn't have a target when I was creating my character to test it on. So, but we'll do, we'll do that. So the first thing I want to do is hex. Good night, Loka. I won't delete it. Okay, so you cast a curse. It is now cursed. All right, and I give it the disadvantage to one ability, so I'm going to make that wisdom. Wisdom, okay. Very nice, and, I like it. And that's a bonus action. And for my action, I'm going to cast Toll the... That's a wisdom save. All right. Ooh, a failed saving throw for the use. And explain to everybody what uh, Toll the Dead does really quick. It's, um, it just kind of makes a, a bell filled air, uh, a sound in the air around it. And it causes uh, necrotic damage. If it fails, it's wisdom save. Yeah, don't forget. Did you? Uh, yeah, you'll do two d five damage at level five. So that's nice. Two d eight or two d twelve. Two d eight because it hasn't taken damage yeah. yet, right? Yep, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, total okay. dead is cool. So go ahead and give it to give it the damage. Wow. So it takes a, ooh eleven more necrotic damage. Looks like it took the damage, and that 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 purple aura is still radiating as well. It's not intensifying or anything like that. Yeah, yes, correct. Yeah. All right, take any other movement you want, and we'll go on to Barian. Hi, um, Barian will advance to about here. All right. And take aim with his longbow. Take aim. Me fire one ready. Ping! Ooh. You break a bow. Automatic. Me. <laughs> yeah, you, you miss. Oh, so guess what? I get, oh. I get to break out the critical fall table. Yeah, you do. Give us a give us a, a critical fumble roll. First ever. I should have it modified for both melee and range, so hopefully. Let's see what you do. Oh, I rolled off the thing. Tighten up over there, Chief. Ah, uh, you, uh, you, you got away with an easy one on that one. So basically, uh, all of the slime, you know, you start to, you know, make your way down the slanted uh, uh, corridor a little bit, and you slip. So basically, you need to make a dexterity saving throw, and the DC and the is 15, and you lose and you, uh, the rest of your turn, including reactions. Do Do you want it in the in the open or in? Yeah, just open. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> Oh my god. 
<laughs> Double Came one. Wow, well, that's bad. It's yeah. Failed a fumble. Table. So, oh, yeah, you did. So you are you're prone. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add prone on you as well. You lose the rest of your turn, and you cannot take any reactions. So, all right. Do I have a straw sticking up out of the water so I'm not drowning? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you're up to your neck. As you, it's right up to your neck. Now, if you would be more further to the left, yeah, but, I mean, you'd be able to get up anyway. So, Talindra, what say you? Okay, I'm going to move up 5, 10, 15, 20 to right here. All right. And I am going to cast Sacred Flame on him. All right, very nice. Give it the uh, the old saving throw. And unfortunately, there's no crits on saving throws, so we yeah. won't. Yeah, he has disadvantage to wisdom saves, too, so. Yeah. Load him up. You can, you can give the saving throw twice. Just drop it twice, and then we'll take the, the lowest one. Wait, all right. No, he'll um, automatically. What am I doing? Oh, that's right. Never mind. Yeah, don't hit disadvantage because it already has the uh, the effect on it for disadvantage and wisdom yeah. saving throw. So yeah, just take that wisdom saving throw and just drop it right on there, Talindra. Right on the uh, the ooze. Here, let me let me help you out here. We got the there's your saving throws. So you should take uh, yeah that first one that says wisdom saving throw and just drop it right on, and it'll do this disadvantage. I click on Wisdom Saving Throw and drop it on the... Uh, yeah, thing. see on your Actions tab where it says Sacred Flame, to the right of it, there's a 20-sided. Just pick that up and drop it right on the, the use. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, sorry. that's how you... No, that's all right. That's how you give it to... It's like doing an attack roll or, or damage. Okay, so with Disadvantage, uh, it failed. So you can go ahead and do your Sacred Flame damage, but I believe... You're going to do more than 1d8 because you are level 5, if I'm not correct. So Yeah, it's 2d8. So, yeah, let, let's modify that sure really quick. Let, oh, I, need to, I need to open up this, and I'll put in another d8 for you. So there you go. It should say 2d8 damage now, so you can go ahead and roll that. There you go. So you're going to do a total of nine radiant damage to the psychic ooze. It's in uh, it's in pretty bad shape. It's got a bunch of holes. It looks like it's deflated a little bit. It's kind of spitting out acid all over this, all over the place and stuff. So, very nice. It's nice to see uh, that work. Take any other movement that you'd like to take, or are you going to do anything for a bonus action first? Um, I might move down by Barian in case he needs. It. Okay, sounds good. And you're cautious with your movement because it is a little bit slippery, but you don't fall prone or anything like that. So, okay, Walter. Don't step on a third. Yeah, don't step on that yeah. baby Ruth. That's, don't step on yeah. that right. Cause it'll... <laughs> so seeing as this thing fell on my brother, uh, I go into a rage. Oh, going to hit rage. Okay. Oh, oh. I'm going to hit rage. I'm, I'm angry. Right. <laughs> the secret is he's always angry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to hit him. I'm not going to hit him with my axe. I'm just going to punch punch him. Oh, nice. So, oh. Uh, unarmed give attack. Me a, yeah, give me an unarmed attack. Yeah. It'd be plus That's strength. Like D20. Yeah, D, D20 plus strength. All right. Four. Gonna punch the punch this thing, and then you're gonna punch your brother for not seeing it drop on. Punch a hole. In oh. All right. Yeah. So you you punch and you miss. You miss a. Uh, you I miss it. Wildly swing at it. Yeah. <laughs> like one of those drunken rages at a at a bar room. Uh, or something yeah, like I'm that. still kind of tipsy from the celebration before we went in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Take Get another off my brother. That was pretty rough. I'm picturing uh, three-year-old girls fighting, just slinging it. <laughs> Pulling hair. <laughs> Don't you get extra attack? Uh, oh, yeah, I get an extra yeah. attack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, swing again. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Yuck. 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 Pick up. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's see if you can go. hit it this time. That's a hit. So, yeah, that, that's definitely a hit. Roll your damage, and it'll be plus two. We need to change your... Uh, yeah, we need to change your... Well, you add your your strength damage, which is going to be... Uh, well, you have a... Uh, let's see... It'll be 12. Yeah, it'll be D4 for unarmed damage, plus okay. four for your strength, and then plus two for your rage. So we'll have to change your rage damage because uh, I think you took that off of the level 20 barbarian sheet. I, I changed it to two on, when I did it. Oh, no problem. Yeah, it's but, no problem, uh, dude. So I'll row a D4 plus six. That's it. You got it. Right. All right. Got it. What happened? Uh, okay. All right. So you got a total of seven damage. So you basically kill the gray ooze as it, as it just kind of splatters all over your brother again. Dam it doesn't damage his armor anymore. So, but yeah, the, the, the ooze is out of commission. It is dead and incapacitated. And then, of course, you lose your rage as well because uh, the next round right. uh. attack. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're out of combat. I'll give you guys a, a little bit of experience for that. And we're, we are going to go by uh, – we're not going by uh, milestones. We are, we're going to go by regular old XP. We're going old school. We're going to count each – Goblin and orc and everything else separately. All right. So you get a whole whopping, look at that, 20 XP a piece. I love it. Going old school. Please, so yeah, please don't. As the, as, as the ooze is dead, the, the statue is still emanating. And you, you look at that and you're like, oh, wow, look, the head does turn. And as you turn the head, there's like this gooey stuff in like the eye sockets because the, the eye sockets are all, you know, hollowed out. And it's like, hmm, what is this? So you take your finger and kind of smell it. It's like, it smells like wax. So it looks like, you know, and you kind of turn the head back around and it looks like that you could put candles. There's like old nubbed candles that used to be in here to make the, the eyes glow, basically. And since you're in there, who, whatever one of you half orcs are in there, why don't you give me an investigation check while you're in there? If there's twenties, no, just open. If there's well, a twenty, I very always reward. Check out the statue before you guys start oh, messing with it. <laughs> nothing, nothing in the tower. I'm sorry. There's nothing inside of the hollowed out head. Just a couple of where you could see there was a couple of candles in there at one time that have burnt all the way down. Bunch of wax. That's it. But that statue is still emanating that purple light. Hmm. Marion's not the brawn anymore, is he? No, Marion. No, Marion no, stands up. Tell Alejandra to, to make a, a strength saving check because he grabs a hold of her ankle to stand up. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, guidance would be gone as well, I would imagine. No, I just recast it on him because I was hoping he oh, would okay. uh, go over there and check out the statue. Any, yeah, any magic users here to check this statue out? Hey, I'm going to investigate this statue. Right now. All right, give me an investigation check. Everybody give me an investigation check who is uh, investigating an NVA. You can give me uh, uh, an arcane you want, check. You want it in a tower or out? Investigation can be out in the open. Oh, nice. What do you see, Jethro? Yeah, you guys saw... Yeah, you guys don't find anything, but trinkets, uh, you know, you're trying to, you're using your, you know, you're kind of really concentrating. You're like, oh, wow, that it's just a, it's just a, like a purple aura. It doesn't do anything, but you know that it is magical. And if you cast a spell magic on it, it would, it would basically get rid of the purple aura, but you, but you're, you know, you, you, you don't sense that. That aura does anything at all. So, 
So what say you, adventurers? Oh, and your your armor is permanently damaged, uh, uh, Jethro. It is at minus one AC now. Uh, is there wah, a, wah. Can it be repaired? It could be repaired, yeah. Yes, yeah, that.